Hi folks, I'm back. Traditionally, it's moving on the Dutch oven. Traditionally, they came over. They've been out before the 1700s. The immigrants, the Dutch, the Germans, the Scandinavians, and the French brought them with them. It was said that Martha Washington, who did the first continental flag, took all the possessions she had was her Dutch ovens, and she passed down to her family, which some of them are now in the Smithsonian Institute. They've been out for a long time. I prefer cooking on them. It enhances the flavor of any of your food, plus it gives you your iron and nutrition value. Right now, I'm going to put this um, bone broth in. What are you making? Onion soup. soup. Yeah, okay. onion soup. All right, put this in first. There's this one that's nice and hot. Fast iron is known for keeping the heat in. Put another jar in there. Boy, that thing is simmering really good. And what is that? The beef stock. Going in. And now, I'm going to add our onions in there. Why why onions for Thanksgiving? Well, well, it's a cold crop. It was a New England thing. And the onions, they used, a, they harvest a wild onion. And then later on, they came to a traditional onion, which was known to put the onions in. A little messy here. So, so why did they use onions for? Well, it enhanced the flavor of their soup. I mean, they use it for all types of cooking. Okay, I guess I'm going to put them all in. Yep. Uh, I got a backup chef behind me. <laughs> Well, it's good already. Like I said, you don't need a really high fire or hot fire, just enough to get that pan sizzling because cast iron holds the heat, which is to your benefit. So I don't have to worry about having a high flame. A lot of people, they'll put a lot of logs, they'll build it up and get too hot, and then you start burning. Um, this Dutch oven, as I said, it's a, a 12D. And uh, it's been pre-seasoned. I seasoned it myself, baking it in the oven, or you can do it over fire using olive oil. Now we're just stirring this up. I'm using a, a drop hook setting. You can use a chain. I like the, right now for what's working for me is I'm using a drop hook. And that's traditional. They've used that many years. The blacksmiths used to make the irons. They make different sizes of them for different heights. And that would give you your teeth. Rotation, but on this here, we're perfect. We're right over the flame. Cool. Now, what I'm going to add it in smells I'll good some, already. I'll do some uh, salt and pepper. Okay, this is not traditional, but we'll lots of pepper. Lots of pepper. Well, I mean, it's not traditional. I mean, with the shaker, you usually do it with pinches and never measure anything. Stirring here. Okay, that's not too hot. I can hold it with my hands. I do have a uh, large heat proof gloves that I use, but it, as I say right now, it's not as hot up here. As do it you is need on to put pan. salt in that or anything else? Yeah, I'm going to put some salt in that. I like using a Himalayan pink salt, but we're going to use a regular iodine. Well, I don't think the pilgrims had Himalayan pink salt back then. Probably not, but they had it right from the salt mines and from the ocean itself, which was close thicker. by. How far were the pilgrims from the ocean? Oh, they were within, uh, well, traditionally, they only within probably was less it? than a quarter of a mile. Oh, I thought it was like three miles. Whoops, no. get that out of there. Don't want to eat that. Get a little bit of pop. Yep. That'll give it some flavor. <laughs> natural salt. Okay, there is the there way. anything else that's going to go in that? Yes, and um, I think they also used a lot of dried herbs, didn't they? Yes. Sage? No, that's rosemary, this I think. The rosemary. Just throw that on top? Yep. We'll have to break it up, do we? What else goes in there? 
Do some hands. Yep. Put a couple of beef bunions in there. You at three or four? Um, I'd put four. Put one on each corner here. That's all there is to it, folks. And then just let it simmer for, what, about an hour, would you say, Maurice? Yeah, well, you know, get the onions really soft. You don't want them... Well, they'll, they'll disintegrate, basically, and right. um, you're just going to cook it down. So it makes a nice, rich, rich onion broth. Might have to add a little bit of water to this. Yeah, I think so, too. soaking up the broth right now. Yep. Put the cover and, on and uh, let it simmer. We'll let this simmer for a little bit. I'm going to put a cover on it. Okay. And we're going to come back jointly when we're ready to finish up. The lodge puts out a, a handle for this to grab. Right now, I'm using a crisp. I'm using a wrench. Okay. Is that flame going to be hot enough? That flame is going to be perfect. We still got a little bit of oil going on in there. Put the lid on. Now I can move the lid just a little bit to leave some of the steam out. That way nothing is going to bake on the corners and burn into it. We don't want nothing burnt. So we need to get some steam out. Now I'll distribute the heat a lot better. Okay. And I will keep the fire, maintain the fire going. Like I said, you don't need a hot, hot fire. All you need is get that pan hot. And we're going to be doing that. Oh my that. gosh, I can't believe how good it already smells. Yeah, it does. Oh. It does. Okay, so we'll be back, folks, and um, we're going to let it simmer for about an hour and add a little bit of water to it, and we'll see how it turns out. We'll be back.